third party risk management, just the formal definition on the screen here, and we'll go into more details in a bit. But third party risk management refers to the structures and processes that are in place that are used to identify, assess, and mitigate the risks and threats stemming from the use of third parties in outsourcing. So that's really what this is about, right? An organization chooses to outsource its service, some services to a third party. In doing that, you inherently uh, have some risks that come up. So third party risk management is how um, risks are identified, assessed, and mitigated, specifically related to third parties in outsourcing. So what is third party risk management? Um, again, one question that people always ask is, who is a third party? So we've talked about the definition, but I want to talk about this to kind of give you more clarity. And a third party is not just an organization. That's the interesting thing, right? It could be a person. So a third party is any entity or person that's working on behalf of an organization. So if it's a person, um, it's not an employee. So this includes like consultants, contingent workers, clients, whatnot, right? So a third party is really just someone or an organization that's working on behalf of a company. And then you'll wonder, you know, what's a third, fourth party? You say fourth party? Yes. <laughs> so in case your third party has their own contractors, for example, right? Or their own workers or they subcontract to another organization, that would be the fourth party. And so really, if you think about it, this can go on and on and on to an nth party because each if each person or each organization keeps outsourcing and outsourcing, then that relationship uh, with the third party keeps extending. So third party is usually the key because that's kind of that first outsource um, service, but then you can have more. And actually, when we're in the sub module, you see that we talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so hopefully that gives you clarity on what the third party is, and also if you can have um, more parties involved down the line. Okay, so again, still talking about what is third party risk management. Um, what are some of the drivers, right? We have external drivers and internal drivers. So with the external drivers, well, let me pause. Let me say this a little bit differently. The reason for third-party risk management can either stem externally from a company or internally. So external drivers can be um, regulatory requirements, for example. And this will be based on the services that are, have been outsourced to another company. So let me just give you an example. If the systems that are in scope for an organization um, for SOCs, let's say the um, systems that are in scope for SOCs are hosted in a third-party data center. Then the that becomes a driver for third-party risk management because for SOCs, you can't just say, well, I have a third-party doing security for my systems, so don't worry about it. You can't say that, right? So the organization will need to monitor compliance at the data center provider so that they can get a copy of their SOC report. And they do this by getting like a copy of the SOC report, which we cover in the SOC module. And so they can include the information from that in their SOC testing. So this is an example of an external driver because the operations that they've moved, moved to the third party, right, are relevant for SOCs. An organization will need to um, ensure compliance, right? Well, not ensure, they'll need to monitor compliance at that third party and one of the ways they do that is by getting the soft report they can also perform an audit if they want uh, whatever they do they need to manage that relationship and monitor compliance because it directly impacts the salt okay so that's one another driver is internal so this can be internal because everything is not always about socks pci the law government no it could be internal because the organization may have policies in place that they've implemented about things that they want to monitor from a risk management perspective. So even if the services that the third party is providing is not uh, covered by an external regulatory requirement, it's still a very good practice to make sure you're monitoring the risk management there. And when we talk about um, the different types of risks later on, you'll see this. 
because the organization has to manage risks regardless, right? So whether it's relevant to SOX, PCI, regulatory requirements or not, the organization still needs to manage risks related to their outsourced services. And that's critical. So do you guys get that? So there are different drivers that, uh, that, that can determine, you know, why third-party risk management is important. We've talked a lot about relationships with third party, what the outsourcer does, right? You know, the outsourcer outsources services, but there are many things to consider. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here, but you know, you have to consider what data am I trying to send over? Like if this is related to data, right? Is this public data, private data, confidential or internal, right? How do I make sure that when I'm sending, um, let's say the, the company is going to be hosting my systems for me, how do I ensure security, right? How would data go back and forth between me and that data center, for example? So when you're talking about data um, outsourcing that involves systems and data, here are some things that you need to consider because that overall should impact which company you select, right? What's their security posture? How will they ensure the continued security of your data, okay? All right, so we talked about things to consider. So now, Again, I just want to talk about this briefly. The next one I really want to talk about is thinking about what the organizational functions are that are involved in third-party risk management. And um, there was a question that was asked in the GRC area like, oh, is this just for IT? It's like, no, many different functions are going to be involved in third-party risk management. I'm giving you examples that have to do with IT, but a lot of groups are involved. So if you see here on the screen, you'll see that at a minimum, we have at least six groups within a um, company, right, that are involved in IT, um, in third-party risk management. So you have IT because they need to be, um, again, if you think about outsourcing services that need to do with IT, they will, they will have to set the security standards, right? They will need to perform some assessments and just manage any threats or incidents that come up as being part of that relationship. Then you have the actual business unit that might be looking to outsource something, right? So let's say an actual business unit says, you know what, I want to, uh, let's say HR. I'm using HR as an example. I want to outsource our HR services to ADP, right? What does that mean? So they will need to be involved because they will need to define the terms of that. Um, legal needs to be involved because contracts will need to be signed, right? To ensure that um, we have contracts in place. Um, procurement. Procurement, typically, this um, think of this as the supply chain management. So they will be the ones internally to make sure, okay, we have an invoice. This is how we're going to pay them um, on a periodic basis based on the services that they're providing to us. Um, compliance, remember, we talked about, we just talked about compliance. Um, so compliance will need to monitor that relationship. What are the gaps that we're seeing, right? Um, are, is, uh, are they meeting our, our contractual obligations and requirements? Just need to make sure that they're monitoring that. And if they're not, what do we do about it? And then from an operations perspective, um, think about this maybe like maybe IT support. Um, so if there are incidents that happen, you know, how do we manage those incidents? Again, they may work with IT. So sometimes you have IT and operations kind of separate. That's why this is separate here. So operations might also need to just conduct assessments, you know, if they make, uh, if they are seeing that there are specific incidents that keep coming up. So you'll see here that this is not done in a silo. Again, because we are concerned about IT and compliance, um, that's why you see me give a lot of examples about IT and compliance. However, there are, these other functions are very much involved. And even if you are in IT or compliance, you might, for example, need to go and take a look at the contract to say, okay, what was our contractual agreement with this company from a security perspective? Because that's what's going to help, because that's what's going to help you determine what the scope of your assessment is, for example. So hopefully this kind of helps you see that, you know, third-party risk management is just not an IT thing. Many functions are involved. IT security and compliance are definitely involved, especially if that um, third-party relationship involves systems um, or processes that are related to IT, okay? So um, that's what I wanted to show you here, and hopefully this gives you that um, explanation and uh, an understanding of that.